we're here, Massey, Dow, and myself from Albertsons. Albertsons is a, gro a grocery retailer. Uh, it's not the uh, sexiest industry to do AI in, but uh, so much data. So we want to tell you guys a little things we're doing. Um, uh, Albertsons, you guys might know the brand Safeway. We got all the brands on the, on the lower part of the presentation. It's the second uh, largest uh, standalone grocery um, chain in, in the US. And we're actually uh, merging with Kroger, which is the number one. 76 billion in sales. Uh, 34 million customers every week, 2,277 stores, and Kroger is basically twice our size, 144 billion. Um, so it's going to be a very interesting uh, uh, canvas to use and play with the data and try to create value for our customers. Just a little more about Albertsons. We're in 34 states. Um, we got 400 fuel stations, 1,800 uh, uh, pharmacies in-store, which also gives us a lot of uh, health data. It's hard to work with but um, because of privacy concerns and HIPAA, uh, but we're, we're working on a strategy around food, nutrition, and health. So that's one of the pivots that we're doing uh, as a company, trying to figure out how for those customers who actually want to help uh, uh, have us uh, look at their data and help them with like suggestions on groceries and healthy eating. We're trying to do that as well. Um, our purpose is to bring people together around the joys of food and to inspire well-being. So we, we actually touch the lives of so many people. All of us have to buy groceries. Like we buy toilet paper, we buy butter, we buy milk. Um, and with inflation, things are getting expensive. So we're very conscious about um, the products and, and what we're buying, right? Probably more than before. Um, we want customers for life. We want to be able to really awe our customers and create value for them so that we can actually have them continue to come and shop with us. And uh, we, the data science team uh, exists, it's been around around two and a half years, I think. Massey's one of the first ones. Um, I joined a year and a half ago. I would, no experience in retail before that. Uh, part of the reason why I came was like the amount of data and the richness of the data and what it can tell us about our customers. And we'll talk a little more about that. Massey's going to come up in a bit and talk about all the efforts around personalization and the deep learning model he's built along with Dow, who's here. Um, and some of the things we're working on, uh, we're working with Google, we're working with uh, Stanford's uh, AI lab um, and uh, the digital economy lab around like large language models and thinking how could we use the data, grocery data and all the consumption data we have, and not only us, but other retailers. Um, and just like also how can we use generative AI, right? Like like meal planning or like generating uh, recipes or like having a, a synthetic voice kind of give commands on how to prepare food. Just nothing's been done yet. We're just exploring these things. And one of the interesting things I think we're kind of excited about is, and we're talking to people at Stanford and Google about this, um, is imagine you, you, you have your large language models, right? ChatGPT, like, and, and those are, are basically um, text that goes in, the model's trained, and then you, you have output text or diffusion models, you have video uh, images, et cetera. What if there was a similar to that, a large behavioral consumption model that's trained on our purchases, on what we buy, on butter, toilet paper, milk, et cetera. Um, so we're thinking about that and having some conversations around that. Um, and um, yeah, I just uh, wanted to put in a plug for Albertsons and the retail space in general, the data scientists out there. And, uh, Massey, please come on and explain uh, all, all the things you do. Our team is around 60 data scientists. 85% of them have PhDs. Massey has a PhD in AI from Berkeley. Dow has a PhD from Carnegie Mellon. So we got amazing talent. So. Hello, everybody. Uh, let me see, first of all, how it works here. Uh, okay. And how do you go? Oh, got it, sorry. Okay, so uh, uh, as uh, Miguel mentioned, um, I run personalization within Albertson. And when it comes to personalization, the question is really, we ask ourselves, and many people ask us that, what is personalization? I mean, the first and foremost. And what we really think about personalization is that engaging with our customers at the right time, with the right content, to the right channel. So if you want to think about my team or the operation that I'm running at Alberson, it's all to figure out what's the right time, what's the right content, and what's the right channel. Right. <clears throat> As you can imagine, 
the core of um, a lot of personalization that we are doing is about recommendation system. It doesn't matter if we are helping our customers to do their routine grocery shopping, or if we are helping or we are trying to excite them with something new, a new product, a new grocery, or if we are trying to help them to uh, find an alternative for a product that's out of stock. All these, from our standpoint, it's some sort of you know, recommendation or personalized recommendation. So as you can imagine, the more that invest in our recommendation system, the better that we improve our recommendation system, is the better ROI we get. You know, one person increase in our you know, click rate or click through purchase rate, right? It means millions of dollars for us. So the question for us has been all the time that how we can improve our recommendation system better and in a more scalable fashion. So basically for that, there are two choices, right? You either focus on your technology, on your models, on your algorithms, or either focus on your data, right? On the technology side, um, this is, and I think you know, many of you, some of you that have been involved in this area, there have been some sort of an evolution on how the recommendation system has been evolving over the last you know, 10, 20 years. Now, there was a time, you know, around, you know, 15 years ago, I would say, that um, collaborative-based modeling was the, the dominant approach in this space. And even nowadays, you know, collaborative-based modeling <clears throat> consider a pretty simple, robust, reasonably fast to market, you know, kind of approach. But as you can see over time, you know, more um, discriminative-based approaches um, have been, you know, evolved, and people have been trying to do that. And in recent years, as you know, uh, with the you know, um, emergence of deep learning and this kind of a solution, we see a lot of you know, um, deep learning based um, uh, recommendation system into the market. But when it comes to the data, the story actually, actually is a bit different. It's more in, in, interesting. As you can see, the kind of data that we are collecting from our customers the kind of data attributes we are collecting from our customers is actually growing pretty fast. It used to be we just focusing on you know, past purchases, past transactions, and use that to you know, have come up with a better recommendation. But thanks to the new technologies and new devices and all the things out there, now we are collecting a lot more data from our customers, like you know, how they are interacting with our mobile app, with our web app, uh, how their Jeep, what kind of data we are getting from GPS data, right? How they are interacting with our marketing campaign, right? How, how they are you know, interacting with our you know, customer services. <clears throat> how about their demographic? So I'm pretty sure if you are in the retail space, you know, uh, you know that there are so many vendors out there that are trying to add more and more attributes to kind of data that you can collect from your customer, from your you know, household, right? And this is good for every data science operation the more data, data is blood, right? The more data means that we can do better. We can do better modeling, right? But at the same time, this comes with a new challenge by itself, right? Because now, we need to spend more time to come up with the good models. And models that can use all these data attributes that you're having to develop you know, such good models. I'm pretty sure for any of you that have done any kind of you know, modeling before, it is, you're familiar with this high level simplified approach that I've you know, presented over here. You know, for every kind of you know, model development in a more conventional way, you have a, some sort of a data, and then you need to extract some features out of the data, and then you start doing your modeling, and then you, you know, iterate on your features, what we call feature engineering, until you get to the kind of you know, um, performance you're looking for. The challenge is that when your data sources increases, I mean data sources, I mean your data attributes, right? That iteration, that iterative process is gonna, you know, be longer and longer because there are more data that you need to attribute that you need to look into and you know you have to go to a lot more iteration to figure out what's the right set of features what's the, you know uh, how to combine them and so on and so on and this is where we really, we really found ourselves a while ago and we realized that okay we have been investing a lot on our you know the infrastructure or collecting you know a bunch of you know data from our customer but now that we want to use all that data to our system, it takes a lot of time. You know, it takes us several months to come up with a good model that we can, you know, better, right? So we started asking ourselves this question that, how we can come up with something more generic? 
how we can make it more algorithmic. And by algorithmic, I mean here that how we can use all the data that we have our, from our customer, all the data attributes from our customers, right? And automatically, algorithmic, they come up with a set of features instead of going through the, all that iteration. Because if we could do that, if we could achieve that, you, that means for us that you know, a six months, a nine months of work now is gonna be squeezed down to just two, two, three, or four weeks at most, right? And that was the starting point for us. For those of you that are familiar with different areas in data science, AI, machine learning, you realize that this is not a new problem. This is a problem that we have seen in other areas. Like in, in NLP, right? people have been trying to do a lot of, you know, for years they were trying to do, do all these manual feature engineering until they come up with this more like a where to work, where to work approaches to come up with more automated feature generation, right? And this, is, this was a kind of an inspiration for us, right? I mean, I'm not gonna spend too much time over here, but you know, as you know that, you know, in, in this early version of the word to work you know, solutions that, you know, at the input you have the words, and the output, you are trying to you know, predict the neighboring words around you know, those, you know, your one-hat vector. And then it has been realized that when you develop your, you know, your um, word embedding in that way, that actually capture the relationship between the, um, the, the words nicely in a way. Like, you know, if, for example, you have the embedded word of the king, and then you know, you know, take out and reduce the embedded word of the man out of it, and plus woman, and then you get to, to queen, right? So, we say that, okay, how, how can we start with get this kind of inspiration, what happened with NLP, and then apply it to the, you know, to retail, to the consumer market, right? <clears throat> and actually, this is what exactly what they did. We said that, hey, how about instead of word we use in our household? Instead of having one hot vector of word, we're gonna have one hot vector of our household, and then in the output, we are trying to basically, you know, predict the neighboring household. But then the definition of the, uh, neighbor is a little bit, you know, uh, more into it, which I'm going to skip that, but, you know, thou can talk more, or I can talk more about that later if you have enough time. But at the end of the day, what really we did, we figured out a way to basically, you know, map our household to an end emission space using all the data that we have around from our household, right? From the geolocation, past purchases, mobile data, ge demographic data, and so on and so on. And then we call it internally, instead of in a house and bedding, we call it a customer DNA because it's more people are <laughs> can connect to it better, right? And similar to the way that, you know, you know you, I'll show you some sanity checking, that how uh, word, you know, word to work, we're able to um, capture the relationship with the words in nicely fashion, right? We did some several sanity checking that is it really that embedding is capturing what we need about our household behavior? And this is one of those examples, for example, if you have, for example, two households, right, that are vegan, we said that, okay, if we pick two households that are vegan, right, the vectoral distance between those households, right, should be smaller considering that if those households are so random, right, or if those households live in the same city, like, you know, San Francisco, right, that should be even closer. Or if they are living in the you know, neighboring area, that should be closer because, you know, what we are doing at the end we are mapping our house or to an end emission space based on the similarity that you know, the engine sits behind, among them. And this is really what happened. And we really, by a lot of, we did a lot of this sanity checking and we realized that, okay, now we are on the right track. We are going good on that, right? As we were going through that process, we realized that in the same situation that we have with our household, we have it with our product as well, you know? We used to have our, the, the data attributes we are collecting about our product our grocery items is increasing also. It used to be like, you know, we just have a product name and you know, the product hierarchy catalog, but now we are collecting their ingredients, their health attribute, their seasonality, right? So there's more and more coming to our product and it says that, hey, how about you know, we also do the same thing, the same kind of embedding, the same kind of a, uh, um, feature, you know, automated feature extraction for, um, for our household, we add it to our product as well. And that was the process for us. Like we did a similar concept, we applied to our product also, as you can see it over here. So now what the team is working on, which is our, our actually in the middle of that, is now that we have done all this embedding, right, it enables us to you know, develop a new class of a classification models, or you know, personalization model, recommendation system. 
in a more advanced fashion, right? So because we have our house embedding, we have our product embedding, and now we are you know, training them to, you know, for the uh, probability of you know, household interest in something like that. So I'm going to leave it as it is. There's a lot more details into that, but for the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. I'll more, but I'm more than happy to answer any question or chat with you offline after that as well.